Take it away. Howdy, everyone. I'm EOD Tex. This is Poppy and Rocky Reshrined. It's kind of half sequel, half remake of the Super Nintendo game Pocky and Rocky. With me on commentary, I have. Hey, guys, I'm Kip. I'm Dagger SR. And let's get into it. Uh, this game added a couple extra characters. We'll be playing as Ame no Azume. And if we're ready to go, three, two, one, go. Woo, let's get it. So this game, as uh, Yotik's tech said, is sort of a revamp. It's not like a full-on remake. It's There are some similarities that we're going to see, especially starting off with the first couple of levels. But it's a very, very sort of different experience. Like a lot of the levels have been really changed. And you'll especially see that once we're past level two, especially. Uh, this might be familiar ground to you, but you'll see a few differences like that enemy right there. But um, some of the actual similarities, you're going to see similar power-ups that are that are able to be picked up. You'll, you'll see the bomb is like this green flame and stuff like that. Oh, and there's also other abilities that are added into this game as well. Like those... Those orbs you see there, that is achieved by EOD Tech simply mashing the firing button. So you can hold it in order to do that attack you see there in the front, or you can just mash the firing button in order to bring out the orbs for some extra firepower. Yeah, speaking of which, this game has kind of four basic controls. You've got your uh, fire button, uh, you have a deflect, which when you charge will give that shield. Uh, there's a slide ability, which this character, Azume, actually has some invulnerability frames during uh, the slide, so that's going to help us get past some enemies in the future. And then there's a special attack, which uh, Tex usually refers to as a bomb. So this is phase two of our first boss here. Uh, he handled phase one excellently. The phase one part of the boss can actually go invulnerable, but the way Tex set it up uh, avoided all that, so he could get uh, straight to phase two. So great job. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. And do you mind if I cut in with a really quick announcement? Sure. Go ahead. We have broken $700,000. GG's. All right. So we're now moving on to stage two here. And uh, I guess I didn't quite finish up uh, explaining all the different sort of things we're collecting. But uh, you'll probably notice in that boss fight, there was no bomb that was ever used on end. That's one of the things that have been sort of changed in this particular rendition of Pocky and Rocky. The bombs are used for what their, I guess, intended purpose was originally, and that's just to clear out any sort of big group of enemies. Uh, no longer does it have that big damage output that you need on to get quick kill a lot of boss fights because... Well, the thing with Uzume here, she has a lot of damage output from all the different attacks she has at her disposal. And that's one of the main reasons she's like the most powerful character in this game. There are some other factors that make her very strong too, and we will get to see that as well in this stage in particular. Now there's something a little interesting here that that text I think is probably gonna try to do at certain points when the stage is busy scrolling. Sometimes it will scroll slowly and sometimes text is gonna sort of retreat back a little bit so it can normalize that or sort of reset the scrolling stage of the level itself. And that's to help speed up that scroll uh, for him so that he can continue to slide forward and sort of speed up, like right there. You, you saw how it was scrolling slowly, and then he had to move back a little bit just to reset that speed to make it scroll faster. By the way, that music that you hear that we just ended, every time you hear that quick uh, theme, that means that Tex is at maximum power for his current power-up, uh, and the maximum power only lasts uh, a, a short amount of time, so uh, anytime you hear that music, he's at full strength. Also, you probably noticed at the end of that last mini boss, uh, it dropped three power-ups of blue, red, and green. Uh, Tex has been picking up the red ones for the fire attack, which is the strongest thing for this character. Yep. All right, really quick. Uh, these are Kappas, so chat, please post all your Kappas. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that, uh, okay. We have a whole boatload coming up here. 
Yeah. <laughs> coming in. They're going to be coming in all at once. Uh, there is like a ringleader that's you can't quite see on the screen there. He's uh, tucked up in the corner there. Just kind of waiting and chilling there. There's that musical theme again for the max firepower. You're also seeing the other big thing that makes this character very, very strong. But normally you can't actually, like, traverse across the water like this. But Uzume is so good that she can just float in the air. <laughs> so she doesn't need to worry about traveling through these uh, un impassable terrain. And this is going to be a big thing in one particular level, and especially one particular section of a level. And uh, I'll be sure to point that out. Anyway, we're coming up to the boss here, and there is a very fairly tight quick kill. So hopefully Tex gets it here. Yeah, don't be fooled. I think the name uh, of this boss is the Hell Kraken, but it's actually Uncle Ulti. We've got some crossover going with this game. So uh, if you remember this fight in the original Pocky Rocky, it's a much longer fight, but because we have much stronger damage output here, we can very quickly dispose of this fight. The float ability really helping out here. There, you got it. Nicely done. Yeah, so he was about to submerge into the, the water there. So that looked pretty tight there. Yeah, I almost released the uh, rope shield a little too late, but got it. All right, so stage three. So this is where you're going to really start seeing drastically different levels. In the original, it was a, I guess, some sort of like haunted ground, and there was like a little church or something. And we faced like a, a bishop or something two times in that level. But we get a very, very different level here. So this is all... All unfamiliar ground from, from here on out if you're familiar with the original Pocky and Rocky. Speaking of which, uh, Tex is doing free play, which is allowing him to pick whatever character he wants. When you actually start the game, when you first purchase it and, and play it, and you do the story mode, you're uh, locked into a specific character for each particular uh, level. So it's kind of neat to see some of the tech here that you can do in free play that you might not be able to do in the story mode. Right. Yeah, so among other uh, among other power-ups that you can grab, there is the shield as well, which serves the same exact purpose as it did originally, which would be you take three hits with it. You can. You obviously don't You want to minimize taking hits, but it gives you three free hits before you lose it. But um, as Kip mentioned, oh, before with the the three different weapons that's also something that's a little bit different they they do in, include a brand new weapon which has got the homing ability uh, obviously we do not want that that weapon though okay whew, that uh he almost lost that bomb there this is a pretty oh man whew, yeah this is a this is a oh. pretty rough section so yeah dying is pretty pretty rough Especially right before this boss. Yeah. You think you could still quick kill this guy? I don't think so, but we'll see. Okay. okay so he's getting us set up here. Let's see if he can do it. Yeah, a little. Yeah, unfortunately, without the full power up of the uh, flame weapon, it's it's hard to actually get that quick kill. But. He killed him there. Yeah, nice recovery. Good job. Nice recovery. So that's stage three. Now, stage four, I believe, is the stage where we're really going to start seeing the ability to float through the air as Uzume uh, comes in incredibly in handy here. And if I cut in with a quick announcement. Sure. Want to give a quick thank you to everyone because, yes, we are getting the pirate song for Curse of Monkey Island. So thank you yes. so much, everybody. <laughs> I love the pirate song in it that game. It is a game. good song. <laughs> Every line in that is so good. Okay, so this section here, this is the section right here. Like, normally you're supposed to stay on, on the, the, 
I guess the ice, the icy sort of platforms there. But because Uzume has the ability to float in midair, she can skip all of that and uh, make it significantly less problematic trying to traverse through all the, the hazards that are in there. Yeah, this game has a total of eight stages. This is stage four. This is actually, I believe, Texas' favorite stage, so uh, it's a really fun one. Mm -hmm. But some of the future stages are a little bit shorter in terms of the length of the stage, but uh, focus more on boss fighting. So hard to say exactly where the halfway point is, but we're getting close to it. Yeah, we've got some of these turrets here that kind of go through a bit of interesting trajectories. There's the use of the bomb there. Picking up a shield. And we're maxed power now. Oh yeah, and those um those flame things at the I guess the yeah, the, the flame things at the front of Usume there, they can also serve as a bit of damage source and a shield it, it themselves. Alright, so this fight, we have to be careful of this shockwave. Excellent. Go. Beautiful. That Good boss job. can be very annoying and difficult casually. Tex did an excellent job of getting it down very quickly. <laughs> Got the whole uh, the eye formation there. Maybe a little bit crooked, but... Now we're coming up on what was my personal favorite level when I played it through casually. Uh, this, some of the aesthetics of this one remind me a little bit of like Secret of Mana a little bit. Uh, this one, I think, is more of an auto-scroller, more so than some of the other stages, so there'll be some times where uh, Tex kind of has to wait for the game to actually progress. Yeah. The, you're going to see a lot more of the use of that, to where he's retreating back a little bit, and it looks like he's, like, wasting time doing that, but he's trying to get the auto-scroller to renormalize its scrolling speed so that he can continuously keep dashing through it's it's quite a time saver on this level in particular right and since this game is initially based on you know a retro old snes uh pocket rocky game what would a retro game be without an airship level right <laughs> of course maybe that's why it makes reminds you of mana secret of mana maybe <laughs> i mean i remember that part of the game so Yeah, once again, trying to reset the speed of the auto scroller there. It's going to be a, a constant theme in this level. Yeah, one thing I will mention too, just about this game generally, I really enjoyed playing it casually. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I really like the graphics, but I really like the music too. There's a lot of uh, great musical tracks in here to enjoy while you're playing. I uh, don't. I don't think we got anything more to actually talk about. So if there is time, for, if you have some donations, uh, go ahead. There's so much love for this run. We have $200 from Shump who says, I used to stay home from school sick and play through Pocky and Rocky with my mom on SNES, and it holds a special place in my heart. I have to donate for one of the more underappreciated games from my childhood and putting this towards the Monkey Island incentive. Always need more GDQ in my life. We also have a $500 donation from Nick. He said, well, whew, well, not as popular as the first two in the series, Adore the Curse of Monkey Island. Please bring us that pirate song. Uh, door hinge? <laughs> have time for one more? Yeah, you got time for one more. Perfect. All right, $10 from Manager, who says, I know EOD Tex from the Metroid Dread community, but it's cool watching him cruise through Pocky and Rocky like a boss. You got this. Thanks. He does. Yeah, so this boss fight in particular is really, really awful for the ninja character because he, they are very dependent on physical attacks. And with a boss like this that tends to sort of hover outward, it's hard to actually reach with physical attacks. It's very difficult for him. But Uzume makes pretty short work of them. Speaking of our last donation, yeah, Tex is a very accomplished Metroid Dread runner as well. We actually know each other through the Super Metroid community. And uh, one thing I love about the GDQs is you get a chance to see a lot of games that, uh, you know, could use even more love. So this is a really, uh, a lot of, uh, this game is a lot of fun and it'd be awesome to see more people get into it and post some speed run times for it. 
I'll eventually get there. I had to... It took me a little bit of time to get a, a Switch myself, so... So eventually I'll have my own time in this game. Uh, so we're coming up to uh, one of the tougher boss fights in this in this run here. Uh, I forget his name. Dex, do you remember? No. No? Okay. <laughs> well, he... Um, yeah, there he is right there. Yeah, one of the shorter levels. Uh, pretty focused on the boss fight here. He's just getting set up there. It's a pretty good line there. And he... Oh, that was oh, really, really that good. That was really good. Really fast kill. Yeah, getting the right line and trying to avoid taking hits from the fire breath is pretty, pretty difficult. Like, ideally, when trying to get, like, good optimal damage with the... with just the straight uh, main ability that you, you have here for doing damage, you, you have to line yourself up just right because, as you can see, it normally starts as... It's kind of a bit spread out, so you got to line it up just right so it has just a single line of fire on it. And you're going to see that utilized again on the final boss. Just proper use of movement to, to do that. As we mentioned earlier, too, uh, this character really benefits from the invulnerable frames on the dashes, and Texas has been doing a great job of taking advantage of that on some of those fire attacks. So he's he's been downgraded a little bit. This could be a little bit of a problem, maybe. Oh, oh, okay, maybe not. That was a key time to get a power up there. Yeah, we have two guys on this uh, screen that'll give fire upgrades, so that was good. Yeah, he had to be very careful not to pick up any other weapon there. That's usually going to be your your biggest time loss is picking up uh, another weapon. These are all on a set pattern, although because he got delayed there a little bit, uh, it might have changed. Oh, it's the same pattern? Okay. Yeah, it starts when... Uh... You get past those six guys. Oh, very nice. <laughs> That's so much, so much better than the original for that. The original is known for being really awful with the spike balls. But yeah, there you go. And those enemies there that come out of the, I guess those dispensers there, they, uh, they kind of operate the same way. They like to try to hunt you down and then eventually they'll try to make a beeline charge and then leave the screen forever. Uh, they, that much has not really changed from, from the original. Tex is going to use a bomb here. As soon as these guys become vulnerable. There we go. Mm -hmm. And this might look a little familiar to you, but um, now we're on that little stretch there. Um, as we're about to approach the final boss of the game, which, um, well, actually, no, it's not the final boss because uh, there's one more stage after this, but it, it is the domain where we initially fought Black Mantle. And that's who waits for us at the at the end of this stretch here. Uh, this, fun fact, that big enemy there used to be a dog. Uh, now he's uh, he's something else. Uh, I'm sure the Japanese probably know. And yeah. all right, so we've got Black Mantle here, the next to last boss. Well, I guess there's two phases of this one, and then we'll get into stage eight. I think Tex is going to try to bring this boss down without it even doing a single attack. Yeah. So normally, like go. originally, there used to be the two statues that kept him invincible, but now there's the fight's kind of different. <laughs> And that he has two different phases to him, but of course Azuzume, well, nicely done. Goes down, goes down pretty, pretty easily. All right. So if I recall correctly, I think Tex is going to attempt to defeat this final boss uh, before, or maybe during its fourth attack, uh, depending on how things go. Though it could potentially go further. Uh, also, there's going to be at one point of this fight, there's going to be some. Uh, sort of enemies in the ground that are going to be trying to grab him, and their hitbox is actually uh, apparently a little bit bigger than what they look like on screen, so he's got to be really careful. So this is the last boss of the game. So there's the max power getting as much damage as he can on this fight. Nice dodge. You're going to see him try to carefully position it there. That might be the spot. 
Very nice. Very nice. So not only is he positioned to hit the boss, but also avoid damage entirely during this whole thing. Oh, no, he actually took a hit there. That's okay, it was just one. The shield has at least two more to, to go through there. And as long as he doesn't pick up a weapon other than the flame, the, the orange weapon, he should be oh, good. Oh, those are those are really difficult to dodge. Yeah, thankfully you have some help with the sages there. That's anytime you see that boss get flinched for a bit by something, that it's it's not coming from you, and that's fine. Time. Very nice text. <laughs> Woo! Great run. Yeah. But yeah, that those spirits that kept hitting the boss at the end there—that's the sages that that are doing that. They're helping you out. All right, I'd like to thank my commentary. Kip picked you up in this game just for this run. So thank you very much. And Dagron, of course, thanks. You ran Pocky and Rocky amazingly. So. Mm -hmm. I tried Kip. my best considering I don't have really much of any experience in this game, but, you know. And thank you, developers of this game, because this is just... A real treat. It blew me away how great it was. And of course, thanks to all the donators and GDQ themselves. Yeah, thank you. Y'all got anything? You got anything? Yeah, I don't think we got it myself. Thank, thank you again to EOD Text, that wonderful run of Pocky Rocky Reshrined. $100 came in from Brian Lee Well and said, Gotta donate during Pocky and Rocky because I always love to see Tanuki games. Tanuki forever. Keep up the good work, everyone. But with that, friends, my time behind the host desk is done for the day. I will see you Friday. But for now, get a quick drink of water, quick stretch, and we'll be right back.
All right, I think I may have been muted there for a second. Something weird's going on with hotkeys. Anyway, for those of you who may have just joined us, Summer Games Done Quick 2023 is sponsored by Doctors Without Borders. Doctors Without Borders, or Médecins Sans Frontières, is an independent international organization that offers medical humanitarian assistance to people solely based on need, irrespective of race, religion, gender, or political affiliation. Over the past five decades, MSF has grown from a group of a few hundred volunteers to an international movement, providing over 10 million medical consultations in more than 70 countries every year. MSF's core values of humanitarianism, independence, neutrality, and impartiality continue to drive their work in providing life-saving and to people whose survival is threatened by violence, neglect, or catastrophe, primarily due to armed conflict, epidemics, malnutrition, exclusion from healthcare, or natural disasters. Thank you so much, Doctors Without Borders. And while we are looking to get set up for our next thing here at SGDQ, I'll get to a few of your donations. We have $100 from David TKI. A pirate I was meant to be, trim the sails and roam the sea. And that donation was in reference to the Curse of Monkey Island Pirate Song, which is a donation incentive that we have met. Thank you all so much for your generous donations for Doctors Without Borders. We have $50 from Cyberbot X. Good morning to Thursday SGDQ. Watching from work, best of luck to all the runners. Put this to getting Titanfall 2 added into the marathon. And Titanfall 2 is our next bonus game here at SGDQ. We have raised over $10,000 so far, but that is a $125,000 incentive. So if you would like to see Titanfall 2 get added to the marathon, get your donations in, and remember to add Titanfall 2 to that donation on the donation page. We have $50 from Val, just here to give my daily Tears of the Kingdom tax. And if you just so happen to be playing Tears of the Kingdom while you are watching Summer Games Done Quick, feel free to put in your own $5 donation. And this might be a great time to put that $5 donation towards that Titanfall 2 bonus game. We have $30 from Quantum V. Thanks again for this wonderful event. Good luck for the end of the week. We have a 250 anonymous donation. No comments, but thank you so much for the donation. We have $25 from Noah Vanderhoff. Come bust a move where the games are played. It's chill, it's fresh, it's the GDQ Arcade. And we do have a GDQ Arcade here on site. I was actually checking it out earlier in the week, and we've got some amazing games in there, including some rhythm games, as well as plenty of other old arcade classics and favorites. We have $100 from George. You guys rock. We have $25 from Edward Von Helgen. No time for song, we have to move. This marathon will be long, but our courage we will prove. This is for Doctors Without Borders, and we pity not a frame. This run was done too quickly, so bring on another game. A pirate I was meant to be, trim the sails and roam the sea. I would like to apologize to all the Monkey Island fans. That's like the only line I remember from that song. So uh, good news is we will be listening to the whole song because we met that incentive. So maybe I can relearn that one. Yeah.
All right, everyone. I've gotten word that we are all ready to go from Monkey Island, so I'm going to hand it over to Frozen Speed. Take it away.